Hello and welcome to another edition of the Legal Anchor. Today we'll be talking about the Bill of Lading. The Bill of Lading is the most important document in the shipping of goods by sea. When one decides to ship goods by sea, the contract, as you know, is drafted. Once the contract is drafted, then we will begin to see the formation of a Bill of Lading. The Bill of Lading is drafted based on the contents of the contract. From this, we know that the Bill of Lading is a document that follows the goods every step of the way. From the moment the item leaves the warehouse or the point of its creation, it is then has a bill of lading because the item is to be shipped and this document acts as evidence of a contract because it shows that a contract was made and what is written in the bill of lading is what is also written in the contract. So you can almost say it is a summary of the contract giving the main ingredients of the contract. It is also a document of title. Why is it a document of title? Because anybody who holds a bill of lading now holds the property in their possession lawfully. And under the contract needs to do everything to ensure that the goods reach to the final person. So they are delivered to the ultimate consumer. From this, we can see that the bill of lading gives that person a proof that they have gotten the goods in good standing. And also it acts as a receipt. It acts as a receipt because it shows the condition that the goods are in. It acts as a receipt because it shows that you got the goods in a particular condition. And now that we're on the condition of the goods, the bill of lading is so important that it documents the condition of the goods every step of the way. So if anything should happen to the goods, if they should become damaged or in any way compromised, this notation is made on the bill of lading and it should be clearly done. However, we see that major problems occur when items are received and they are damaged, but yet there's nothing written on the bill of lading. Now we have to look at case law because case law is what dictates to us how this should be handled and also the statutes. Once we read these statutes, we can try and come to a realization of who may be liable. The bill of lading forms the basis of the majority of disputes in the maritime industry. And as such, understanding the key concepts that drive the bill of lading is very important. One needs to be aware of the domestic laws in their country and also the international laws because the Bill of Lading is a document that travels the world as the goods may originate in one country but their final destination is a country halfway around the world. Therefore, the goods have passed through various legal systems who will be liable. All of these things we see the Bill of Lading is so important because once damage occurs Therefore, we now know that we need to look at the bill of lading to see and if the not notation is made on the bill of lading That means that we now have to do an even deeper introspection of the goods and of the bill of lading as to where it has traveled and the contents That are written on the reverse of the bill of lading because the bill of lading not just has the not only has the names of the parties who are to be receiving the goods and who have sent the goods and a description of the goods but it also has major details as to what was said in the contract so the bill of lading will show what was said in the contract it will have summaries on the reverse side of it of what is said in the contract example your inco term may be written on it and any other things that may be distinguishing for that goods will be written on the bill of lading so we have to now look at the bill of lading and the contract to determine who is liable in such a situation. The bill of lading is a vitally important document to the shipping of goods by sea and understanding it is of even more importance. I thank you for your attention and I look forward to discussing more of the bill of lading with you. Wait.
Sorry. Yeah, Mr. Dennis, how are you doing? Yes, sir. Yes, man, I just stop by and have some coffee at my favorite coffee shop. Yes, man. Yes, man, so is everything going with you? Well, you know, the laptop that we talked to you about previously, well, we're making a little progress still, you know, but we yeah. ask you a few questions. Then. Sure. Um, the term deviation, you're familiar with that term? Yes, man, but that's the same thing that we talk about in the contract. So the same thing about carriage of goods by sea. So, of course, the contract has various terms, as you know. And one of the terms that is inserted here is a deviation clause. Deviation means that if you should come off of your route. So just the same way, that's like driving anything you come off of your route, you deviate. It's the same way the ship has a route that it's supposed to be on. And if it deviates, then there can be consequences. Because there's what they call a lawful and an unlawful deviation. Okay, okay. Alright. So that means that if they're on the arrival time, it's delayed then. That means I can sue them then. Well, that would also depend you now on the type of deviation and you said if they're late with coming with their goods. Yes. All of that now depends on the, if it is a lawful or unlawful deviation. And for us to determine lawful and unlawful deviation, we have to look at the statute. And the statute that guides us a lot is the Marine Insurance Act and other statutes. Okay. But these statutes speak to if the deviation is lawful and unlawful. However, as it relates to the time and everything, all of the work had a contract. But did we stipulate the contract had time for the things that arrived? All of those things, and if they arrive, our date is off. And once again, if the deviation is unlawful or unlawful. So it all depends on that. And the case is what guides us. You have to be case law. All right. So in terms of the contract, what am I obligated to? Okay, well, you are purchasing these laptops. So what you're obligated to do is pay the necessary monies that need to be paid to the relevant parties. Once you pay the relevant monies, you have basically done your side. And as you remember, the shipping of goods involves a lot of people. You have all these auxiliaries. You have all of these uh, persons who are intricately involved. Some of them are named, some are not named. All of them are doing their job in furtherance of your contract and your goods to reach to you here. So that is really your obligation just to make sure you pay their obligations to do their end of the bargain. Okay, okay. All right, so on good, so on good so far. All right, let's have two more questions to ask you. Sure. All right, so if anything goes wrong, right, how long would it take for the insurance company to give you money? Well, I couldn't tell you that because what we deal with is just ensure that your items are insured. So we put that in the contract. We have the insurance term in the contract that is inserted, plus we have your insurance, and that will be your insurance company now to handle that. All we do is ensure that under the law, it is there. So you have that protection. So that's really what that is for. All right, final question. Let us be a scenario. Yeah. What if the vessel, right, the vessel that carried the goods, then, there is, it wasn't made to carry the goods, then, right? And the storage area, everything, you know, it was just not made. What would happen then? Okay, well, in such a situation now, that now goes to the ship owner. Because the ship owner essentially, the vessel that he or she is using is fit to carry these goods. If not, it can be deemed unseaworthy. Depending, once again, on the situation, we're guided by case law heavily in such an area. So you have to read, I would have to do research on my cases and everything to ensure that we are, that this ship owner is in breach, to see or to determine if he or she is in breach because the ship is supposed to be, to be seen worthy to consider that it is fit to carry the prescribed goods. If it is not fit to carry the prescribed goods, then you may find that the ship owner is liable for whatever damages may result to your goods and any other claims you may want to bring against them for your goods that you suffered a major loss. Alright, thank you, thank you so much for your time. Yes, man, definitely. Okay, cool, yes, man.